The voice is a lot about how we feel. It's a lot how we think, what we believe in. You are looking at yourself, you are looking at your values, you are looking at how you express yourself, you look at the role you play in the family, in the world, in your work, just because of voice lesson. Anatomically, when we are scared or when we feel stress, everything in us tightens. Mm -hmm. Those muscle tightens up, we cannot breathe well. When the body feels threatened, it won't allow you to do what you want. So when we bleed, it's very difficult for people to make any kind of sound uh, when we bleed because the blood goes into the vocal cords as well. So it's very difficult to stabilize the voice and make it like solid and straight just because of hormone. Welcome to the Wildflow podcast with me, Charlotte Puanto, an award-winning menstrual cycle coach and priestess and the founder of First Moon Circle School. I guide women to honor and embrace their sacred cycles in their life, leadership, and business. Let's say hi to more ease and flow by co-creating with your body and goodbye to struggle and burnout. This podcast features soul-enriching conversations, inspiring you to love your cycle, lead as a sacred leader, and grow a life and business that serves you by harnessing cyclical life and business practices. Join me and other change makers thought leaders and wise women to embrace and embody your wild flow. Today's conversation was super interesting. I had on Mihaela Botoskova, who is a voice coach, and we're really jumping into exploring our relationship to our voice and how we express ourselves as women and how we can learn from quite a young age to not express ourselves, silence ourselves, not feel our feelings, not express our truth, and not be authentic in the pursuit of being perfect or quiet or compliant, all the ways that we learn to keep safe and small. And our voice is something that we often end up having to do some work around, either consciously or unconsciously, um, so that we can speak up and reclaim our power as women, especially if you're somebody who is putting yourself out into the world through your work, either through your sacred business or in the workplace, who has to speak up, maybe even in the family or at home or with friends, who has to speak up for what you believe in and what is true for you and to express how you feel and what you need and to be heard and seen. This can be quite challenging and is something that I actually do um, quite a bit of work on with my clients um, inadvertently. It's not something that we necessarily set out to do, but it does come up when we are doing empowerment work and especially when we are really reclaiming our body and the wisdom that's held within our body and we have to explore how we feel, what we need and speak up. So. Michaela, um, in English, her name is Michaela. Um, she has been working with the human voice for more than 15 years, starting off as a singer. And then after moving to London, realizing that there's so much more work out there that's being done with regards to the voice. So she, she was studying music and the voice and extend, expanded her work from singing to supporting actors and public speaking and anyone who's eager to explore their voice. Nowadays, Michaela has moved away from music sheets and towards yoga mats. And she's here talking to us about how we, when we do voice work, we're actually holding up a mirror to our values and our feelings and to all that we think we are and how we express ourselves. She's sharing how hormones influence our voice. So um, hormones around the day, hormones from when we're in fear, uh, fight and flight and around our menstrual cycle too. We're talking about the um, throat and womb cervix, the yoni connection too, and how our voice can change um, when we're bleeding. So interesting. Um, and she's sharing some practices and exercises as well to help us to connect with our voice, discover our voice, find tension that's there in our throat and our uh, tongue, and um, get used to uh, hearing ourselves and our expression once again. 
Uh, So this is really a beautiful episode and I hope that you enjoy it and find it super useful, whether you are intentionally thinking about working with your voice or whether it's something you didn't even know that you might be called to explore. Happy listening and welcome back to World Flow. So welcome to today's guest. We have Michaela, but her real name in her native tongue is pronounced Michaela. And I just really want to honor that. So welcome to the podcast. How are you today? Oh, Charlotte, it was a beautiful welcoming. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited to talk about the human voice. And um, I'm excited where actually we will go with this. So let's let's see and let's start. Beautiful. Thank you. Into the mystery. I love to start these um, conversations with a cycle check-in. And so I'd really love to invite you um, and I will go first to share, um, just to orient ourselves into our, our body um, our body cycle, but also the earth and the seasons, um, because I just always find that it frames our conversations so well and lets us have that real moment of coming home to where we're at today. So I'll go first. I'm um oh it's an interesting question actually in my menstrual cycle I am day 31 so I'd lost count it's like I got to day 28 and just went oh I don't know what's happened this cycle because I ovulated late and um it's like when I sort of get to that point when my my bleed usually comes around day 28 this part of me just wants to kind of give up on counting and just go Mm. well what's the point in counting anymore um and I tend to just drop into a place of noticing how I'm feeling in the day and um being with what's there because it's kind of like this prolonged void space where I don't know if I'm about to bleed or if I've you know, what's kind of really happening in these cycles when I I don't ovulate, um, when I think I do, or even if at all, I've had a bit of a disruption in my life in the last couple of months or so. It's just knocked my cycle out of its rhythm. So just surrendering to really what is there um, and the, the truth of that and the everyday embodied experience of that. And so, yeah, that means that I, I, I stopped counting the other day and like oh where am I at I'm not quite sure so that's where I am and I feel uh, um oh it's it's evening time here it's 8 15 p.m it's deep winter um we've had to put the fireplace back on we haven't used it for a couple of years because it's so very cold at the minute and um side note I heard recently that Australian houses are the worst in the world for for um comfort levels when it comes to insulation um so they're just paper thin that the the cold just blows through the houses so anyway Mm -hmm. I have the fire on I'm cozy I'm in that sort of twilight evening phase late in my cycle I feel warm and I have cacao and I just feel really grateful to have this moment to speak with you and slow down and drop back into my body because it's school holidays and that means little time for for me um so this feels really nourishing oh that is me and so I invite you where are you at in your cycle if you have one or how do you are you relating to the seasons and cycles of your life of the earth maybe and just how are you feeling today with that perspective that cycle perspective charlotte can i just say that i really can feel how jose you feel when when you start i'm maybe because i work with the voice so much and for so long i can like straight away hear what's going on in people's voices and when you started my brain was immediately like Oh, I need to like settle down and calm down a little bit. I was running around the whole day. And now I, I just like heard your voice and I was just like, oh, that feels nice. Oh. It feels lovely to just like nest, settle down. And uh, like, I'm just thinking about 
feminine energy. That's what it represents for me. This kind of welcoming, nourishing, kind, supportive, respectful place. Mm. So I just wanted to mention that. And then (laughs) to answer your question. Mm. Mm. To answer your question, I actually, I've been traveling a lot and um, my cycle is shifting. Uh, But right now, I actually, which I'm so happy about, I synced with new moon, new moon cycle. So uh, new moon was at the big, I think it was the 6th of July. So that's when I started to bleed. And I was just so happy to like, I felt like, yeah, I am, I'm like one with the nature. I'm like, because um, it's so easy for me to just be caught up in my head. So like knowing that maybe not, maybe I'm a little bit listening to the cycles of the nature and I'm more open to the creative, feminine, nourishing energy, which somehow it's connected with nature to me. It seems like, I don't know, it looks like. Um, but yeah, so a new moon, it's for me and I'm very happy about it. Very happy. So I'm glad I can talk about it here. <laughs> mm, I love that. That's really beautiful. Yeah. I, it's funny because I have been bleeding with the new moon for quite a long time. And then a few months ago, shifted out of that cycle. Um, and then it, have been bleeding at, at different times every every cycle. So last time I was bleeding with the full moon. And that was the first time I think I've bled with a full moon. And it was such a surprise to me how it felt because I'm so used to bleeding with the new moon. And there is there is a truth. I don't care who wants to um, debate it or it, it's science and it's logic, but I really find that when I bleed with the new moon, I have such a low, um, almost like an energy kind of crash, not a crash in a sudden bad way, but like as in a real descent down to minimum. It's like my energy just completely fades and I want to really cuddle up and spend like a whole day in bed if I can possibly get away with that. Um, And I feel really sleepy and it takes me like several days to get my energy back, you know, to wait for that lift in energy once my bleed finishes. And I found that um, bleeding with the full moon, so I think I'm going to be bleeding with the full moon perhaps this cycle too, I find that that depth or descent isn't the same or wasn't for me before. Um, I feel like I I drop and I get really tired and I get quite very inward still, but just not to the same level, not quite so like, oh, it's midwinter and like, I need to completely shut up shop and I don't want anyone to talk to me or come anywhere near me. And I can't do a thing. I just can't get out of bed kind of energy. It's, it's more sort of like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm inwards and I'm quiet and I'm slow and I'm resting, but the sort of bounce back was quicker. Um, it was just quite interesting to notice, um, how I felt mentally and emotionally and energetically um just bleeding at different times with the moon i wondered have you ever experienced anything you've talked about bleeding with the new moon have, I, i'm just wondering if you've had a sense of you know anything like that for you at all or whether it's something you're discovering uh when i turned 30 that was quite a big thing for me to notice how not the body is changing, but how I relate to my body. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like um, until then, I didn't even, I didn't feel that I have a body, which sounds crazy. <laughs> but I was just so cut off from, yeah, from even feeling pain, which is mm-hmm. very strange. Um, but I just 
didn't, I, I don't know, I just didn't connect with my body. But then I turned 30 and then I not, and I started to be more, I think I'm, I've been sensitive my whole life. Uh, but when I turned 30, I started to like maybe appreciate it, mm. how sensitive I am. And then I realized, oh, like I am, like right now I'm noticing how much my mood is changing, like how hormones how the the strong role of uh, our hormones um how much the hormones can do for us or against us and it's so out of our control to like to a degree um so when i uh, got my when i started my cycle this month it was in the morning and then I, f I felt great. And by the end of the day, I was just like, I can't move. I don't want to see anyone. I don't want to hear anyone. I just want to dark silence. Um, and it's just because of what the hormones do to the body and how the body is actually clearing through the blood, right? There is, I also want to say how I found you. So, um, so I don't want to jump there. So let me just finish this thought. Um, <laughs> it's like how hormones can influence us and the voice as well. Uh, and we don't need to even notice it. Mm. We can blame our partners. We can blame our work, anything. But it's actually so interesting how the female body is like designed this way. Recently, I actually realized that men work on the 24-hour cycle and women work um, on the month cycle, which is so interesting. And I'm, I, I never like noticed that. And only now I'm trying to not just respect that, but also um, be grateful for it. Mm. So yeah. to know to know what is going on when, so that I can adjust myself to the not just the cycle but to being a, a woman oh that's so interesting yeah thank you for sharing I think that that's such an interesting thing too so did you say in there that the the hormones influence the voice yes I'd love to hear more about that do you want to tell us a bit about that so <laughs> this is something I have not looked into it yet because it's just so broad. Yeah. But I have a few things I can say. Um, the research, when you look at the research, they don't know either. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where we should start. Uh, yeah. But regarding women, uh, the older we get, the deeper our voice will be mm -hmm. uh, because of the testosterone. So it's what is advice to do for women to like practice they, their, their higher range, which is we can do some exercises if we want to. But this is like we should be doing that so that we don't drop the voice as much. Mm. And men, men, they have the opposite. Their voices they they go higher yeah interesting so that's hormones and also when we bleed it's very difficult for people to or for people for women to make any kind of sound uh, when we bleed because uh, they they don't get swollen the vocal folds but there there's just a blood goes into the vocal cords as well so um it's we are it's very difficult to stabilize the voice and make it like solid and straight just because of hormones. That's so interesting. And I'm reminded of how the connection between the throat and the cervix is connected. Yeah. And if our cervix is soft and open and, you know, releasing, then I'm curious if that means that the the throat and the vocal cords are sort of soft and open as well or, or you know not don't have the tone perhaps the word to create sound in and the same way 
when we bleed, it, this comes from the traditional Chinese medicines. Uh, when we bleed, the blood all goes from the heart down to the womb and the cervix. And because of that, all the emotions we feel during the month is flashed away through the bleeding. Mm -hmm. So that is that might be the reason why we can be so emotional. Because of the energetic connection uh, between the heart and the womb and the cervix. Mm, love that. Thank you for sharing. That's gorgeous. Wow, there's so many... I just love how it's all so interconnected and it just, you know, I find it quite a marvel how our world is so set up to think that it's not connected, that, you know, different parts of our body, our, you know, our voice, our emotions, our bleeding, our feelings are all separate and not connected in, in you know, in any real way. And yet, of course, that's just ridiculous. And I just love how much it's, you know, you've given these examples of the ways that they are connected and that they are are changing and, and cycling at all times. And I'm really interested to dive deeper into your work and your experience as well um, of working with the voice and guiding women to work with their voice um, and, um, and, you know, how that ties in with with the cycles as well. So from that, would you like to share with us a bit about you um, and what it is that you do? Right. So, hello. <laughs> um, I am, I call myself a voice thinking and yoga coach. Uh, so I work with the human voice. I started with singing, then my work moved toward acting, then public speaking. And now it's a lot about connecting the body and the voice. Because it feels that the voice is like on its own. And it's very important for us to speak up because that's how we express what is like the I read somewhere the voice actually touches everything inside and then it reflects that out so I feel like we also should talk about this uh, instrument which is the the human body so I like to connect the human body and the voice together and I also like to look into research um I don't know actually why, because it feels like the research is a little bit behind. <laughs> mm. It feels like we we find something, we believe in it, it works, and then research comes later and confirms everything. But it kind of brings value into my work. It feels like people respect, or maybe I that's... These people I attract, I am not sure, but it feels like um, research brings kind of values into my work. So I'm curious, how did you get from singing then to right. to doing this particular piece of work and, and helping women through coaching? Well, that's a nice question. I am... Um, so I was trained classically, which means singing next to the piano, reading music sheets, uh, doing all those uh, scales and exercises. And I was like, why, why am I doing this? Like when you start as a child, it's, um, I don't know, it feels like you have something to do. You don't need to be at home. <laughs> When the older you get, it, I was just questioning why I'm doing, why I'm doing this. It doesn't bring, doesn't bring anything. There's like nothing. The joy is like that's that's gone. So I stop singing completely, and then after like five years, I went to a workshop, and that was quite life changing because the woman started to use or started to use 
she used the the body. But it was a lot connected to Grotowski, which I don't know how familiar people are with the method, but it's very physical. So you need to be so exhausted to create certain sounds because when we are tired, the voice is more free. And that's, uh, I, I, I was like feeling during the workshop when she connected the, the movement, the body and the voice that something is changing, something like, I feel, I started to feel the body. I was just like, oh, this is, um, this is very interesting how the voice can be confident and strong just because of movement. And I've been playing with this thought since. <laughs> and it wasn't like straight journey, um, but more or less different opportunities came to me to start exploring this a little bit more. And now I'm teaching it. Hey, lovely. While we're here, do you know what your secret cycle superpower is? If not, I'd really love to share with you my quiz, which will help you to discover exactly that. You will learn which part of your cycle you thrive in, where your strengths and gifts lie, as well as what your vulnerabilities actually are, the shadows that you cannot see, and how to really nurture them and nourish them so that you are reclaiming your power, you have confidence and strength, and you feel your best all cycle long. You're going to learn tools, techniques, and practices to balance your energy, get grounded, and love your cycle so you can be your best in life, in love, and in if you don't have a menstrual cycle, come and take the quiz because it will work with the moon cycle and show you which phase of the creative and business cycle you struggle with most and where your natural gifts lie. Discover your primary archetype now. Are you the muse, the connector, the challenger or the mystic? I'd love to know. Because I'm really struck with what you said there about you know, our voice changes depending on how we feel in ourselves. And, you know, like you said, when we're confident, it it's it's one way. When we're tired, it's freer. Like that to me is interesting. I thought you were going to say it's more hoarse and more strained and it, it's it's more constricted actually was what I thought you were going to say. So I'm really curious how, um, you know, because from the point of view of the work I, I do with women when it's, we're reclaiming our body and we're learning how our cycles work and then we're you know looking at you know all the things that come up across our cycle and all the ways that we are and um doing some inner transformation work around you know what we're stepping into stepping forwards um usually the women i work with are um are like doing some healing work in the world or you know, have a business or a coaching practice or space holding or something where it doesn't matter what it is, where they need to put themselves forward and be seen and be heard. And it's so interesting how much confidence ties into our voice and how we can feel like we don't, um, you know, we don't claim our voice. We're not heard. We're not comfortable with ourselves being heard. And I, th I feel like, you know, I was reflecting earlier on before we recorded on, you know, what, what is it ultimately? And, and there's so much of our power, isn't there, that's connected to our, our voice um, and, you know, how much we, you know, want to be seen or not seen or speak our truth or, or you know, feel like we've lost our power even around our voice. Um, and, you know, I feel like so much of this is, is, is through the body and this is what you're saying. And I'd just love to ask that question to you. I'd love to hear, you know, your, in your specialized experience, um, how is our voice connected to our, our sense of power? Um, and you know, how does that happen? How do we lose our voice or lose our connection to our voice? Um, and I guess the follow-up question from that is, how do we reclaim it? Uh, so I think I start with emotions. I've done the research on emotions and 
The Voice. Three years ago, I never published it because I'm not very satisfied with the bit about brain, like how brain process emotions. I feel we don't know enough about the brain, so I didn't put it out there. But what I've done during the work, during the research, is I... I um, conducted, it was eight interviews, I feel, with um, voice teachers, voice coaches, people who work with the voice. And um, I asked a bunch of questions if they feel there is any connection between emotions and the voice. And the interesting thing is uh, that what came, I got lots of data out of it, but one is that we are actually afraid of emotions. So people didn't want to talk about it. And also, how do you address it? It's so the voice and the emotions are, you can't touch it. So how can, uh, how can you talk about it? And then also, most of them were teaching uh, teenagers. So how do you, how do you talk about that? Uh, with teenagers. Uh, so that was very interesting uh, that we are afraid of emotions. Not everyone, of course, but uh, it was like a strong uh, finding that came out of the research. And I think that is kind of my answer to your question. That um, our emotions are reflected in our voice. It means um, if someone is lying, you kind of know something is off. You don't like, you don't, you can't like, you don't have a solid fact. You don't have something solid, but you know something doesn't feel right. Um, if you talk to a friend, oh, I'm, I, I live in London, so there's a lot about how are you? I'm fine. Um, so there is actually not, we are not going deeper into it, how we are actually. Um, but that is the, the the emotion. All these emotions are reflected in in the voice, and um, we can't hide them, which is interesting. This is something like body language, right? You you actually show what you feel and what you think by uh, the way you stand up, uh, and the same is with the voice. You can't hide it, and. Um, that might be connected to, uh, especially with women, that is my experience working with women, um, not to be hurt, not to be too loud, uh, not to be successful or be too successful because I need to prove something to someone. Um, or, uh, you know, all that is all that is actually happening in the brain in the body while we are talking in front of people if we talk about um like using the voice in action and yeah there's so much going on in the body and if we are off just a little bit if we don't support like ourselves you don't i don't feel like you need to have like bunch of people behind you it's always good, you know, <laughs> um, that supports you. But you need to be the one uh, that believes in the message you are saying. Otherwise, people just won't listen. But uh, the, the body, you can access the voice through the body. So you don't need to just do vocal exercises, but you also can and vocal exercises and different affirmation and journals to like support yourself but you also can support yourself through those different uh embodied movement that i use oh i think that's so interesting that you talk about it through feelings and emotions because yeah that seems like so true you know and how so many women learn to and english people like you say you live in london that's hilarious i'm english um and uh <laughs> it just makes me laugh because it's so true it's such a no I'm not offended I think it's hilarious um I think it's uh it's so true you know English people have a reputation of um I'm you know fine fine like not really saying how they are you know keeping everything on the surface level and like just getting on with it keep calm and carry on all of those kind of you know phrases stereotypes it's 
it's really, really true. But I think as well as women, we do also learn, don't we, just to, you know, fit in a nice little box and tie a ribbon around ourselves as 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 children usually. Um, and, you know, we have to be quiet to some degree. Um, but I think it's quite a universal message, you know, and it has been that we, you know, we need to um, kind of rein in our voice and our feelings. Um, and so, you know, it makes a lot of sense to me that they would be connected because when we can't acknowledge our feelings, we can't acknowledge our truth. And when we can't acknowledge our truth, we can't speak our truth. When we can't be heard, we can't speak up. Um, so yeah, that, that just feels like a really succinct way of, of, you know, a a connection that, that you formed there. I think it's, it's really, really interesting. And so you're saying as well that, you know, with the practices that you guide um, women through, it's, you know, it's both emb- embodied and, and voice work, but also that inner work as well about, um, you know, looking at those deeper feelings and stories that, that are there that we hold on to about, you know, um, that then support our voice reclamation work too. Mm-hmm. And I also feel like you can change your life by just working with your voices, mm. with our voices. It's a very, well, that's what I see when I teach, when people are brave enough, because I also work with men and they don't want to <laughs> work on their voices um, a lot, <laughs> mm. but sometimes I do. Um, and um I notice how, because you practice your voice, you do exercises, you are getting familiar with your voice. Um, it's uh, you are used you you get used to hearing yourself and feel the resonance of the of the voice when you are actually speaking or singing or whatever you are doing with your voice. You can change your voice. You can change your life by getting used to to hear yourself and then what's the wonderful thing sometimes what i hear is when um, people are shopping and something happens and uh, someone is shouting at them they can like speak out they can like say okay this is not right and it's it but this is reflex so it's it can be rehearse to a point they are like different therapies where you can uh but this is like reflex when you are so familiar with what your voice can do that you can speak up for yourself in the situation you are not prepared for Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is actually what i love the most about the work i do that people people can change their life just because of vocal exercise (laughs) this is very simply said but it's true it's true Mm. Mm. incredible I used to be so afraid of my voice it would be it was something that I just like you know was always quietly softly sort of spoken don't look at me I'm not here don't notice me kind of thing and it it's been a real piece of work that I've had to do by myself I didn't realize that it was something that you could get support with actually um at first um and it it's I find I've really found that podcasting has helped me so much not just in actually being able to speak and speak with far less ums and ahs and coherently and but really trusting what it's been about and I found it through the work that I do as well especially when I'm holding events I do lots of circles and ceremonies and so you know I will speak before a group of people and it's a sacred experience and I don't want to be reading my notes and I started off for a long time um you know years ago I would read my notes and kind of be like and it's been a practice to step away from that and just to really trust that what comes through and out of my mouth, (laughs) essentially, you know, some people call it channeling or intuitively speaking, or, you know, I just find that when I can sort of stop overthinking it and just trust that the words will come out my mouth as they're meant to, same with podcasting. Um, 
I, um, it, it's, it's not just helped me with the, my actual voice and actually speaking, but with so much trust in myself and who I am and what I have to bring and that what I'm going to say is going to be okay and not laughed at or judged, um, or not enough in any way. And it's given me so much confidence to work with my voice in that way. And I just can't believe how, how much podcasting has really done for, um, helping me to speak up and put myself out there and, um, and really own, I guess, the fact that I've got something to say and that I want to share it with other people. Um, because before I started this podcast, I think, I think this podcast is now three years old. I was absolutely terrified by the thought of doing this. So I just really wanted to add that in as my story of, of how I've gone from really doubting myself, but but also really wanting to hide and feeling so scared of speaking up and um and being seen as part of that was was the story. And just the fear that I had nothing useful to say, nothing clear to say, and that I would I had to read my notes in order to speak because I just couldn't trust myself. So it's it's trust. Self-trust has been the core healing for me through working with my voice and I can hear how much my voice has changed now compared to I bet I I, I kind of don't really want to go back and listen to like the first podcast episode because I'd probably make me cringe but <laughs> but I, I'm sure there's going to be a difference so yeah I just feel like you know these opportunities when we can really let ourselves hear ourselves and and um let ourselves be expressed, whether it's singing or speaking or just you know, practicing trusting in, in our voice it can be so powerful. That's my experience. Can I, can I just say how beautiful this is? I went through a similar thing, but I call it often just making... Can I say that? Well, let me think about a better word. Making <laughs> just making full of myself in front of people and then just building, just going home, writing what worked, what didn't, and then going again and then again and again. And and also I really believe to the message. I really believe to my work. I believe it, it, I just love it so much. So I have like a motivation behind um, behind this action. So it's not just about speaking up, speaking out. It's just doing it because there is something people should know, I think, because it will help them. Um, but that's what I've, I've done. And also all the work, all the training I went through helped me to... To, uh, today I, I read, um, because I like to do presentation as well, and today I read a sentence, something like, you don't, don't present talk. And I think that's what I learned through all of it, to be authentic. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what people want to see, that's, one, that's what they want to hear. But it's very, it can be very difficult to stand up and say, okay, guys, this is me. I mean, take it, leave it. Not, it won't get better. <laughs> it is it's what it is. It. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it's not like I'm giving up. It's just like, this is how it is. Um, and there right now to just finish my thought is um, I do sometimes ask for feedback because I want to know what people think, but I only ask those I um, I love or I respect or they do similar work because it's very easy to judge someone, so easy. So I don't need to, I also, that's what I read somewhere. Beyonce doesn't, Beyonce does uh, not finish uh, her concert and go out, ask um, audience what they think. Mm. You know, it just, this is what she does. This is like, like it not. Um, so now I'm asking people, first I ask myself. So sometimes I record the work I do because I want to see what, because sometimes, you know, you can't 
reflect on what you are doing when you are in it. Uh, so I ask myself first the feedback and then I ask others if I want to know. But this is how I start and um, and I would do it again, you know. It wasn't bad. Mm. It, was, it was fun. Yeah. I think I go and listen to your podcast uh, like from three years ago because <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I love that yeah you know what so will I and I will just celebrate myself so much so yeah thank you for that nudge I was also just reflecting on authenticity there and how I've noticed that our voice changes when we drop into a more authentic sharing I've 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 sort of noticed it before and I think someone's even said it to me as well I think when we're talking from our head our voices go a bit higher like this. And I think when we sort of speak authentically, it can go a bit lower. Is that something that you've noticed? Is that true? Um, it's just a thought there because I feel like we can really hear when people are being authentic. I think it's connected to everything we mentioned. Um, anatomically, when we are scared or when we feel stress, everything in us tightens. Mm -hmm. Those muscle tightens up. We cannot breathe well because everything, it's not possible. The body won't allow you when you feel, when the body feels threatened, it won't allow you to do what you want. You cannot think your weight out of it. That's uh, how recently the nervous system regulation was everywhere. Um, so that helps a lot that you actually calm the body. And because the body is calm through breath work is wonderful. Like lots of stuff are great. Um, so when the body is calm, you actually can go and do the work. So that what is anatomically happening. And that's actually when everything is tied here in the throat, the voice immediately goes up. Mm. We cannot breathe, uh, dry mouth, a lot of sweating. This is just your body is telling you that you are in danger. It feels you are in danger and it wants to protect you. So it's not like your body wants to fight against you. Your body wants to save you. Your body wants to run away because it doesn't feel nice. So that is what is going on. And you cannot think. It's very difficult to, to think. So... And then how can you be authentic in this, in this situation? It's just like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking about, I, uh, I joined Toastmasters. Oh, yeah. Which is, yeah. So I joined Toastmasters because I just wanted to see how the presentation goes and what, what's going on. And uh, I think like the second evening straight away I gave a talk and I won as a speaker and it was, was completely it, it was just like I, I didn't it was so strange me thinking being there doing the thing like how much I didn't like what I was doing it was so cringe <laughs> but they liked it. And the only thing they liked it, it, it was authentic because I was, I was not so worried about my self-image, how they will see me. I was just like, guys, I might never see you again. Let me just do this and let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. this is like. That's my safe blanket to you. Sometimes I, I will move. I will never <laughs> see those people again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, um, I, I've been writing about stage fright uh, this morning. And that's what um, showed up as well. That sometimes we are scared because we want to be so perfect that we won't allow ourselves to be who we are and everything just stands up. Um, mm -hmm. So the voice is a lot about how we feel. It's a lot how we think, what we believe in. Um, so you think if you take lessons with me, you think you are taking voice lessons, but there's a lot going on. <laughs> there's a lot going on. 
what what happens? What go, what do you go into? I'd love to get a bit of a, a a picture of what happens when you work with somebody. It's it really depends on the person. Mm -hmm. So it depends how they start. Some people start talking that this is the problem and this is for how what they want to fix, uh, and that's what we do. Sometimes uh, people don't know. Uh, so it's very. It depends how open people are and how much how deep I can go with them um, so what this means what am I saying um, we can go a lot into the thought process when people are ready um, I it doesn't work with everyone but most of the people not most. Some people uh, are not used to be supported and not used to be told that what they are doing is enough and it's perfect. And it really is. And just by seeing them and saying these few sentences once a week, it just they just blossom. And it's wonderful to see them. So sometimes you don't need I don't need to address like listen, you need to work a little bit on being kinder to yourself. We are just doing it and they take it home and they practice it within the vocal uh, training. So it really depends who comes. So it can be singing, it can be just music theory, but I don't get those people anymore, which is very interesting. So I used to prepare people for exams. Mm. here in London and um, and people don't they, they don't come to me anymore so that probably it seems that's gone um, but otherwise it's singing public speaking uh, acting for camera on the stage um, and then I see how willing they are and if they are scared or if I can do uh thing or two with them because it's very so I am self-employed so it's very easy for the people to disappear so I need to be very careful with um, how I approach the work because when you take voice lessons you actually take a mirror and you are watching yourself I mean not physically but this is what is going on you are looking at yourself, you are looking at your values, you are looking at how you express yourself, you look at the role you play in the family, in the world, in your work, just because of voice lessons. Mm. I don't advertise it this way. <laughs> <laughs> I can, yeah, I can totally understand that. But uh, that what often happens. Yeah. It really depends how people, how far they want to go. Mm. that sounds but really really powerful fun. yeah you know there's the surface level work but it's that deep work that really I can just imagine is that real sense of um well transforming your voice and your relationship with your voice um yeah that sounds incredible um so if you had a I'm just thinking you know for people listening if there's somebody who you know is trying to get more confident speaking um you know maybe that's um you know teaching classes or workshops maybe that's speaking on podcasts maybe that's on social media I'm just thinking of who's in our world maybe that's um you know in, in the workplace what you know let alone professionally speaking um but just sort of every day wanting to look at building their confidence to be heard more and to put themselves out more what would the first tip be that you if you were to share something, where would should someone start by looking? You at know what? Way? I don't know why. I don't know why, but I am thinking about reading out loud. Ah. So you get used to to hear yourself. You start to use different words. Um, you might use different. It depends on what what the story is about. You might use the different pitches in your voice. Uh, so the voice can move up and down. The breathing can change depending on the story. So somehow that's what I wanted to tell you. But if you want some like practical exercises, I often would start uh, standing and like shaking the whole body. 
mm-hmm. because often when we are ready to do something, it's, you know, the adrenaline, an, another hormone, right? Adrenaline is pumping through the blood and you cannot say adrenaline, don't do it. It's just like, no way. So you just shake the whole body and you just shake the whole body and shake all the nerves out. And then I would focus on um, tongue and lips and maybe the jaw as well, because these are those muscles you are going to use. So what can we do? Some exercises. Mm, rolling R, but I don't know if everyone can do it. I can't do it very well at all. I can't really yeah. roll my R's. I can, that, exactly. That, that was quite good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not so very good. That is it. the one. <laughs> but then uh, maybe just gently uh, biting the tongue, like all over. So you get the sense of the muscle. Mm. then you can stick the tongue out like a lot I mean like a lot and breathe through your nose that's really hard yeah exactly so it means there's just lots of tension then doing the opposite so the tip of the tongue goes back like inside the mouth and then um, we can do some, um, on the pronunciation, tongue twisters. Red lorry, yellow lorry. So this this is exactly... Red lorry, yellow lorry. (laughs) Everyone is, please don't do it. Well, listen, it's helping. It's really helping. So going as slowly as possible. So you really warm up these muscles. And then... The last I would leave you with uh, for the higher register, or it can be for the low as well, the word sing. And then using the NG and sliding up and down. Sing. Okay, I'll have a go. Sing. Like that? Exactly. So this way you start to explore your higher register if you want to. but all of your registers, um, higher, lower, the middle, um, this is a great exercise. So th- now you are ready to go out there and say the word, what needs to be said. <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much. I love those tips. They're amazing. That's so <laughs> fun. I invite, I, I hope everybody was doing that along with us as you were listening, um, because I, I found that that was really interesting to see like, you know, like you said, where the breathing comes in, like where your mouth is limber and not and where the tension is and hearing your voice at the different, um, you said register is the word, you know, different register as well. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I just think there's so much in this conversation that's just so interesting about, you know, looking at your relationship with your voice and, you know, are you somebody who who feels like, you know, you're generally quite quiet or you you keep yourself to yourself a little bit more or are you quite comfortable speaking out, um, putting yourself out there, speaking your truth? You know, what's that connection to your feelings telling you about your relationship to your um, to your voice and, and the hormone piece? Absolutely fascinating. So thank you so much, um, Michaela. I just really enjoyed that conversation. Where can people find you if they want to learn more about you and your work and follow along? And yeah, how can people get into your world? So I am, my website is Michaela Sound, which is M-I-C-H-A-E-L-A Sound, S-O-U-N-D dot com. And the same is my Instagram. And that is all I use because I have other projects. So I need to dedicate some work and some time there. So this, these are the two main uh, channels to find me. And thank you so much for having me, Charlotte. Oh. I really thank you for welcoming me in this wonderful place and letting me to talk about what I'd love. And I hope someone got inspired and refreshed and ready to speak and sing. Listen, dance, move, everything. Anything's possible. So let's let's go. 
Thank Let's you. Let's go. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for listening to Wild Flow. I love having you here and hope you loved this episode. If you did, please show your love by leaving a rating and review and share your fave episodes with your cycle and biz sisters and those who haven't yet discovered the power of their body and cycle. This is how we collectively create change and heal the sisterhood. It makes such a difference. Thank you for sharing. Haven't discovered your cyclical leadership style yet? Take my free much loved quiz now to receive your free in-depth playbook on how to up your sacred leadership, grow your business and thrive by embodying your cyclical archetype. Go to charlottequanto.com slash quiz now. Until next time, be devoted to your body as guide and your cycle as oracle. Mm-hmm.